Good evening and welcome to Morris's Midweek Message. Just one announcement this week and that's to do with Sunday morning or service as usual at 11 o'clock in the McWilliams Hall or you can watch on the church website or on Facebook. Our reading this evening is from Luke's Gospel chapter 7 and at verse 1. It speaks of faith being exhibited not by a local but by a foreign soldier, a centurion. Let's read the story together. Luke 7 verse 1 When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowds following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. This is the story of an encounter that Jesus had, not with the centurion, but with Jews who were sent by the centurion. And that was a very odd thing to have happened in Israel at that time. Remember the Romans were hated as the invaders, as the ones who oppressed the people, who put taxes upon them. The nation of Israel wanted to be free and yet they couldn't. This invading force was too powerful. So it seems quite strange that one of their leaders, a centurion, had found great friendship in the people of Capernaum. Such friendship indeed that many of the leading Jews were prepared to go and ask Jesus for a favour on his behalf. A centurion was a proven warrior, the leader of a hundred men. This centurion, like all of them, probably had seen many battles and had been involved in many wars. Yet he seems to have been a man with a tender heart because we learn that he loved his slave. Now, I think this was also quite unusual. Slaves were worthless. So if one got sick, he just was thrown out or put to death and someone replaced him. But not in this case. This centurion loved his slave. That was one outstanding characteristic that he had. He could love as well as fight. The second was that he was deeply religious. He was almost a convert to Judaism, you think, because he spent lots of money in providing the Jews with a synagogue. 
And he surely must have been intrigued by their scriptures and by the words of our Old Testament. Again, a very unusual trait in a centurion. A man who was deeply religious and drawn to this God who revealed himself in the Old Testament. He also respected the Jews, even more unusual. They were treated by many of the Romans as a cantankerous people. They didn't want to be in Israel, in Jerusalem, but they were stuck there with this people who didn't like them at all, who didn't want them there and who made it quite obvious. Yet this centurion was different. He respected the Jews, so when he needed their help, they willingly offered it. The leading citizens of Capernaum came to Jesus on his behalf. Well respected by the Jews of his time. Another trait that this centurion had that went against the grain was that he was a humble man. When Jesus was coming, he, he said, look, I shouldn't really have bothered you, but don't come any further. You shouldn't come into my house. Probably he knew that to do so would have made Jesus religiously unclean, not able to go to the synagogue, for example. So he was mindful of Jesus and he was also aware that there was a power in Jesus, an authority in Jesus that he could echo in his own life. He says it in the words here. He says, look, I understand you have authority, so just say the word and my servant will be healed. I know what it's like to give orders. I can tell soldiers to do this and that and they must do it. I can command my slave to do whatever I will and he must do it. So I know all about authority, but you have an authority that is even higher than that. Isn't it striking? that Jesus now begins to talk of this man as a man of faith. Faith like he has not witnessed before in the whole of his own nation, Israel. And they've never met. There is no mention of Jesus in this centurion ever meeting face to face. But Jesus recognised a man of faith. And because of that recognition and because of the way he asked, Jesus healed his servant. This is a truly remarkable story. When Jesus tells us to love our enemies, it is clear that in this little town, this centurion, who probably was in charge of that town, had gained the love and respect of the Jews of that place. Old barriers were broken down. He built them a synagogue. And when he needed help, they freely offered it. This is a truly astonishing story. Former enemies can become friends. Faith can be recognised. Hope can be offered. 
Faith can be exhibited in what you're asking for. And Jesus, in this instance, responded by healing the centurion servant. This is a message of hope. And this reminds me that we must treat everyone as individuals. Simply because this man was a Roman centurion did not necessarily mean he was wicked and bad and someone to be hated. By his own approach, by the openness of the community of which he was forcibly made a part, they came to love and to respect each other. It gives us hope, does it not? That enemies can become friends. That faith in Jesus Christ can turn even the deepest and bitterest animosity into something wonderful and good. A message of hope on this Wednesday evening near the end of October 2020. Shall we pray together? Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful story of hope, of how lives can be saved, of how enemies can become friends. In even the darkest times, love can win through and hope outshines the darkness. We are living through difficult days. And so, Father, we pray that you will be with us as we do so. May we exhibit faith in you that you will bring us through, that you will guide us through the darkness into a new dawn. We pray for all who are in hospital this night, all the NHS staff who are working so hard to save their lives. We exhibit this evening the same faith that that centurion exhibited when we ask, Father, that you would heal and restore many and bring this virus to an end. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may grace, mercy and peace be with us all this evening and forevermore. Amen.